Hispanic Society Museum and Library. My name is Christina Aldrich, and I work in the Development Office. March is Women's History Month, but this year, the Hispanic Society will devote the entire year to the women who have helped shape our museum and library. The second installment of our video series is dedicated to Emilia Pardo Bazán, a Spanish novelist, literary critic, and journalist, and one of the most important modern writers of the turn of the 20th century. Her writing addresses social issues, especially a concern for gender inequity. She is the author of 19 novels and hundreds of short stories, which we will learn about shortly. Thank you for joining us in celebrating the women of the Hispanic society. This month, we are paying tribute to Emilia Pardo Bazán. This year, 2021, marks the 100-year anniversary of her death in May of 1921 in Madrid. For this reason, we want to pay tribute to her work as a writer of recognized prestige, but also, and above all, as a woman of great personality and influence in the cultural panorama of Spain at the time. A woman who fought in defense of women's rights at a crucial moment of change that marked the transition into the 20th century. This portrait of the writer is found at the collection of the Hispanic Society. The portrait was painted in 1913 by Joaquin Sorolla, and it is a part of Archer Huntington's commission of the Valencian painter, which he formed with the intention of creating a wide collection of portraits of famous people in Spanish culture. This is an oil painting, measuring 110 centimeters by 82 centimeters, that shows the Galician writer in the last stage of her life. However, just because she is represented in this way does not mean that she no longer has a strong temperament or lacks belligerence. The author was 62 years old at the time when this portrait was made, and she was already an established and recognized figure in the Spanish literary and cultural worlds. Here, she appears comfortably seated and simply dressed in black. Everything about her persona, her gesture, and countenance radiates a strong personality. Pardo Bazán comfortably reclines in her armchair, resting one arm on it and placing the other on her waist with a defiant and self-assured gaze. All of this suggests a mixture of boldness and confidence, which were some of the traits of the author's personality. On the other hand, the writer is portrayed without hiding her corpulence. It is fair to consider this portrait one of the most accomplished and honest representations that exists of the Galician author. Interestingly, the relationship between the Galician writer and the Hispanic Society of America started three years before she was painted by Sorolla. In 1910, Pardo Bazán was appointed member of the Hispanic Society, where in the archives we can find her letter of acceptance. The letter is signed by the writer as Countess of Pardo Bazán. Emilia Pardo Bazán is one of the most interesting figures of her time for many reasons. To begin, she was a leading intellectual of her time. Pardo Bazán excelled as a writer in many areas of literature, such as novels, essays, and poetry. She was also an editor and journalist, as well as an educator. What is most remarkable, perhaps, is that she was able to be all of this in a world dominated almost exclusively by men. Our author is also relevant because of her strong international character and her desire to learn about new cultures and languages and bring Spain closer to the contemporary European culture, which was considered more culturally and socially advanced. Finally, and we will stop and discuss this in more detail, she's very interesting due to the contribution of her ideas, actions, and writings, her contributions to the movement for women's rights in a critical moment during the turn of the century. We will first talk about the most transcendental aspects of her life. Pardo Bazán was born in 1851 in La Coruña, Galicia, in northeast Spain, in a warm family environment that was considered advanced and socially aristocratic. 
She received a good education that was reinforced by her great love of reading and her tireless desire to know more. The paternal figure in her life, José Pardo Bazán, who was a liberal-minded aristocrat, aided in the developing of his daughter's reading and studying capacities. Her first story was published in 1866, when Emilia was only 15 years old. In 1868, she married the lawyer and aristocrat José Quiroga in the country house of Meiras, a property that had belonged to her family. In 1869, her husband was elected deputy in the Spanish court, and she moved to Madrid. She received her first literary award in 1876 at the age of 25. The award was given to her for an essay about the father Feijó, also from Galicia, and one of the most renowned figures, as well as one of the known supporters of the Enlightenment in Spain. We must emphasize that Feijó had already written The Defense of Women in 1726. For these reasons, we cannot rule out that this is one of the primary factors for the author's interest in the enlightened thinker. That same year, she would also give birth to her first child, Jaime, to whom she dedicated a book of poems edited by Francisco Giner de los Rios. In 1884, she separated from her husband in a friendly manner. Friend and companion of the great literary figures of the time, she was a predominant figure in the Spanish cultural world and a very prolific writer, mainly in the fields of novels and essays. She passed away in Madrid on May 12, 1921. Now we are going to review the three most important aspects of the literary and professional career of the writer. First of all, we want to highlight the enormous work of Pardo Bazán as an intellectual woman, writer, essayist, and journalist. She maintained a relationship of professional equality with many of the intellectuals of her time, for example, with Francisco Giner de los Rios, founder of the Institución Libre de Enseñanza. This figure, a family friend, was the one who encouraged her to explore Krauss's philosophy and thought. He also introduced her to the intellectual circles of the Institución Libre de Enseñanza itself. Pardo Bazán was always involved in the pedagogical reform of Spain and concerned about women's access to education. For this reason, in 1882, she participated in a pedagogical congress at the Institución Libre de Enseñanza, criticizing the scarcity of access to education for women in Spain, as well as what she called the taming or domestication of women in a social environment that taught them submission in marriage and in society itself. The author's intervention in this Congress is shown in her essay, The Education of Men and Women, Their Relationships and Differences. Pardo Bazán was also friends with writers such as Menéndez Pelayo, Pérez de Ayala, Unamuno, Campo Amor, Leopoldo Alas, Clarín, and of course, Benito Pérez Galdós, with whom she maintained an emotional relationship after her separation with her husband. She worked as a journalist for El Imparcial and for the magazines La Época and La España Moderna, this last one belonging to her friend Lázaro Galdiano. She also worked on her own magazine, Nuevo Teatro Crítico, founded in 1891. However, due to financial reasons, this project only lasted three years. As an essay writer, the articles published in the magazine La Época, which were later compiled in her famous essay La Cuestión Palpitante in 1883, stand out. This book confronted the vision of the literature of the moment, the French naturalism of Emile Zola, and the Spanish realism of her contemporaries and friends Galdós and Pereda. The book, with a foreword written by Clarín, was very controversial at the time. The essay is considered a fundamental text 
for comprehending the entry and evolution of Spain in the modern European literary ideas. In this book, she also talks about the important role of women writers in English novels. Finally, as a novelist, the author transitioned from the French naturalism influenced by Zola to the idealism and symbolism found in her later works. Many of her novels defend the figure and situation of women at the time. Let's see some examples. La Tribuna, published in 1883, is considered one of the first Spanish naturalist novels. It tells the story of a female factory worker in Marineda, the fictional literary name of La Coruña, who is responsible for a strike. The novel reflects the environment of the cigarette women, Cigarrera, of La Coruña, hard-working wo hard women and mothers, a social issue that had barely or not at all been explored so far. La Dama Joven, from 1885, discusses marital crises from a woman's point of view, perhaps an autobiographical reflection coinciding with her own marital crisis and divorce. Insolación, published in 1889, shows a strong sense of feminism by questioning the established values for women at the time. The novel narrates the sexual adventures of a widow with a younger man. And of course, influenced as well by French naturalism, her most important work stands out, Los Pazos de Ulloa, The House of Ulloa, published in 1886. In this novel, the writer exposes the decline of the ruling proprietary class and the Galician aristocracy as well. Coinciding with her separation from her husband, the writer enters an extremely prolific period in which the novels that stand out are La Dama Joven, La Madre Naturaleza, La Prueba, and others. Many of these novels de deal with the subject of women and represent an advocation of the rights of women in different social classes. The author addresses claims of both social and gender issues. She also stood out on the field of short stories and tales. The Hispanic Society holds the manuscript of one of these novels from 1908, La Sirena Negra, or The Black Mermaid. It is also important to highlight her great curiosity to know and learn ideas and cultures outside of the Spanish tradition. A tireless traveler, she reported her voyages as a journalist in El Imparcial since she traveled throughout Europe to France, Germany, and England starting in 1873. She was fluent in French, English, and German, as well as Russian and Italian. She always advocated for Europeanization and the need to modernize Spain. She maintained close relationships with women activists in England. More particularly, she became a member of the Lyceum Club of London, founded by Constance Smedley Armfield. This club was an organization whose interest was to promote the development of women from a social, educational, and professional point of view. The organization was associated with the emerging suffragist movement in England at the time. Pardo Bazan was also a member of a very similar association in France, the Paris Ladies Club. In Spain, this type of association and advocation would begin much later. And with this, we are entering into her fundamental role as a feminist writer. Other than her specific concern with the education of women that we have already discussed, Emilia Pardo Bazan was a constant defender of women's rights at all levels. Throughout her entire career, the writer argues and brings relevance, whether that be through her works of fiction or her essays, to the submission of women to the decision of their parents, husbands, or brothers, and even sons, and to their lack of freedom, attributing this situation to many different factors, such as the lack of education or the prominence of religion. In addition to her female-led novels, which we have already discussed, 
Her most outstanding works of nonfiction in this field include La Mujer Española from 1890 and La Reforma Integral del Traje en los Estados Unidos from the same year. In this work, the author deals with a very particular point. In it, she defends the need to modify female fashion and more specifically, the importance for women of wearing comfortable clothing as one of the key measures to their liberation. She criticizes corsets and uncomfortable lingerie that can be not only harmful for women's health, but also tormenting and suppressing for women. She highlights the existence of a particular American and German garment that are more relaxed and therefore more comfortable for women. In, 19, in 1892, she published the Spanish edition of John Stuart Mill's book, The Subjection of Women, for which she was in charge of its full translation and preface. In this book, the author talks about the matrimony of men and women as equals, and this is the reason why Pardo Bazán considered the publication of this book in Spain an essential part of raising awareness in the Spain of the moment. Other essays concerning feminism are from 1893, like Exposición de Trabajos de la Mujer en Chicago, La Mujer Periodista in 1897, or Algo de Feminismo in 1899, pieces in which she discusses the current international differences in terms of the defense of women's rights. She began as an editor in 1892 in the collection of books Biblioteca de la Mujer, a series of publications by female writers, including the Baroque writer Maria de Zayas, and other pieces relating to women, amongst which her edition of John Stuart Mill's piece, The Subjection of Women, stands out. Pardo Bazán was the first woman to receive the title of professorship at the Central Madrid University in 1916. Additionally, she was the first woman president of the literary section of the Madrid Athenea and the first female professor at the School for Higher Education of Madrid. She was also named the Counselor of Public Instruction in 1910. However, she was never able to become a member of the Real Academia or Real Academy of the Spanish language, from which she was actually rejected three times. Interestingly, the same thing happened to Concepcion Arenal and Gertrudis Gómez de Avellaneda, also distinguished women from the literary world at the time. Emilia Pardo Bazán was a widely known writer in Spain, and her works were translated in many other languages and reached recognition worldwide. We can consider her one of the pioneers for the feminist movement in Spain. Having a leading role in a hard time in history, she fought for women's rights. She claimed access to education as a fundamental need of society at the time and dedicated a good part of her role as a public woman to defending these rights. Both her works of fiction and her essays deal with the topic of gender, which had barely been explored at the time. She died in Madrid on May 12, 1921, which is why this year we are commemorating the centenary of her death.